Dirtle Magic. Thank you for tuning in to Dirtle Magic. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like the content you see here today, and leave a like and share the video with someone you might think is interested. Leaving those likes really helps us out, but another way to help us out is by using our TCG Player affiliate link below. If you're looking for singles, sealed product, or gaming accessories, please consider using our link to support the channel. We also have some playmats at inkgaming.com. Go ahead and hit the link in the description to check those out. Alright, let's grab some spells and dirtle with some magic. Hello and welcome back to Dirtle Magic. Today, we're traversing Yurlock the Scorched Lashes territory. So, let's see our opening hand. Uh, land, some follow-up, removal, and some burn. A lot of stuff in between, so I think we can keep this and it'll be alright. Our commander is one black, red, green, legendary 4-4 four, four, Vaishino Shaman, Vigilance. A player losing unspent mana causes that player to lose that much life, and one tap each player adds black, red, and green to their mana pool. Okay, our first opponent is a partner pairing of Kamal, Heart of Krosa, with an Evolving Wilds into play and crack. Six green, green for legendary 5-5 five, five, Human Druid. At the beginning of combat in your turn, creatures you control get 3-3 and gain trample until end of turn. 1 in green until end of turn, target land you control becomes a 1-1 one, one elemental creature with vigilance, indestructible, and haste. It's still a land. Partner. And its partner is Tana the Bloodsower. 2 red green for legendary 2-2 two, two elf druid. Trample. When it deals combat damage to a player, create that many 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens. Partner, of course. Mounted into play for the Kamal and Tana player. Temple of Deceit for our next opponent who happens to be Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. Tormod the Desecrator, and, yep, Garuda Doom of Depths. Kinda saw that coming. So Garuda is a companion here. Three, or sorry, four Demir Demir companion. Your starting deck contains only cards with even converted mana cost. And for the reminder text here, remember, this isn't how it is anymore. You have to pay three to put it into your hand, and then you can cast it only at sorcery speed. Breeding pool into play for our last opponent. We'll have to cover them in a minute. The uh, Demir player over here has essentially three partners. Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, if you saw my last video series, you know what it does, but 3 blue, 3 1 for Legendary Human Rogue, and there's the battlefield as a copy of any creature you control, except it has its other abilities, which is the Legend Rule doesn't apply, and it has Partner. Tormod, the Desecrator, 3 black for a Legendary 4 2 Zombie Wizard, whenever one or more cards leave the graveyard, create a tapped 2 2 black zombie creature token, Partner. Our turn gets us Bajuka Bog, that'll probably be very good later. Let's go ahead and play the Stomping Grounds, get into play tapped. And we'll pass it off to our opponents and get that Farseek down on the next turn. So our last opponent who played the Breeding Pool is Damia, Sage of Stone. Four black, green, blue for Legendary 4-4 Gorgon Wizard, Death Touch. They skip their draw step. And at the beginning of their upkeep, if you have fewer than seven cards in hand, draw cards equal to the difference. So she essentially refills your hand every upkeep. Sylvan Library and Aspire Garden into play for Tana and Kamal. An amendment I have to make. The reminder text on this card is actually correct. I forgot, digitally, you can always errata it to have the correct text. So on the card, the physical card, it's not correct, but on this one, it is. Land into play for the Demir player. We have a Sunken Ruins. Over to Damia, Command Tower into play. Our turn brings us a Mountain. Alright, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and let's see. Let's get down the Firelit Thicket, and then we'll go ahead and use Farseek. What do we want to get? Uh, Blood Crypt could be good. We do have two black sources already. Might want to get a red source, so let's go ahead and get Cinder Glade. And we'll pass it off. Over to Tana's and Kamal's turn. Sylvan Library will trigger, and I will stop saying that until it's removed or destroyed. Snow Covered Forest into play, followed by Elemental Bond. Command Tower into play for the Demir player. Garuda goes to their hand. They discard Keterect Leviathan. There's the Battlefield Eternal and other non land permanents to their owner's hand. That's pretty good. Also, it means they can recur it with Garuda, which is not pretty good. Jami Sage of Stone with a land and then a Felwar Stone. Well, it's on theme. Comes our turn, we get Erebos, God of the Dead. Let's go ahead and play a Swamp, get down our commander. Next turn, maybe Bajuka Bog, because I really don't want the, uh, the Garuda player, which I think is mostly what the deck is at this point, to get a Graveyard. Pass it off. Gru can be very good. So good, in fact, I even have one in my Yortiller paper deck. It is pretty ridiculous. Over to the Blood and Heart player. Yeah, you get it? Blood, Heart, yes. Mad Ratter coming down. Whenever you draw a second card each turn, create two 1-1 one -one black creature tokens. Over to the Demir player, Island into play. Wall of Stolen Identity. 
Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be your lock. It is. Uh, isn't it supposed to tap it down, though? When you do, tap the copy creature and it doesn't untap. Yeah, so it's still bugged from the last time I saw it. That's unfortunate. Good for us. Uh, bad for them, because it should actually work. Over to Damia. I always kind of toyed around making a Damia deck. Because you can really put anything you want in it, but then it just kind of becomes good stuff. At least that's the trap I fall into. The Gitrog Monster. So, it could be another Damia Landfall deck. I have seen a lot of those pop up in the recent few months. Forced into play after the frog. Comes our turn, we get Magius of the Wheel. That would be good if we can activate that and then lay down a bog. Could be pretty good. I uh, don't know that I want to do it just yet though. I want to get rid of that other Yearlock, so we're going to do that. Let's go ahead and play Gear Reach Sanitarium. Go on the attack first, smash into Tana and Kamal. They take it, that's fine with me. Okay, so let's see what we want to do. I want to use the Noxious Gear Hulk to destroy the Yearlock. So we're going to need six mana, not an issue. Let's go ahead and tap our commander. We're going to need double black. And I don't think the rest of this really matters, but just in case it does. And Noxious Gear Hulk to the battlefield, please. And we'll destroy the other Yearlock. It's down, we gain four. Uh, Wall of Soul and Identity will be somewhat difficult to get out of the graveyard without bogging next turn. Hopefully they're not going to draw a soul, or drop a soul ring, rather. Our opponents take some mana burn over to Tana and Kamal. Lotus Cobra coming down for the TNK player. Okay, didn't quite see that coming, but it is a good card. Land into play, Lotus Cobra will trigger. Tana and Kamal, extra free mana. Growing Rights of Itlamok. That's going to get a hand in their deck right fast. Hopefully we'll run into a board wipe. If I remember correctly, the deck has seven board wipes in it, but I'll have to go back and double check. End of turn, Growing Rights of Itlamok flips over into Itlamok Cradle of the Sun. Taps to add green, otherwise it's Guy's Cradle. Over to the Demir player. I'm kind of hoping they do like a Buried Alive kind of effect, but we'll have to wait and see. Clever Impersonator. It's a clone deck. If you see a Garuda, expect there to be clones. I mean, Sakashima is also in the deck, so. Let's see what it is this time. The Gitrog Monster. Two lands into play for the Demir player because of the copied Gitrog Monster. They tap down the rest of their mana and pass it off to the Sage of Stone. Tatiova Benthic Druid coming down for Damia. Makes sense. Land into play, she'll trigger. Damia player will get one life and draw one card. Yet another land into play. Gitrog on the attack. Not into us, that's nice. Tana and Kamal gang the Gitrog Monster original. So let's see if they block it at all. They do just have rats. No blocks. Combat damage is good. T and K down to 19 for commander damage. They've also been dipping a bit into the Sylvan Library too, so they just really need to get the game plan online to overwhelm us, I suppose. Comes our turn. We got three visits. That's okay. Let's go ahead and play the bog. I want to do the wheel first, but they're going to get Garuda down, get the wall, Garuda, do the things. I don't like that happening. We'll go ahead and target the reanimator player. Let's go to attacks. This time, we'll send it off into the Damia player. They take it. Four commander, down to 35. Second main. Go ahead and activate our commander for some delicious mana. And then we'll play Magus of the Wheel. And then we'll cast Erebos. Probably going to get some hate out of that, but eh. Don't need our opponents getting their life back. And we'll pass it off. I bet somebody will be digging for a board wipe now. Speaking of which, definitely wanted to Bajuka Bog the uh, Leviathan out of their graveyard. Didn't want all of our stuff bounced, especially if they're going to be able to attack us with like, you know, five Garudas. Over to Tan Kamal, Mad Rider triggers again. Notably, you don't have to uh, keep the cards or pay the four life. It was similar for that uh, Game Nights episode with Jorail, I believe is how it's pronounced. I uh, did not use that in our version of the deck though. Sylvan Library is what, $20, $25? I think it might be higher by now. It's an expensive card. A good card, but an expensive card. Rampaging Ballads. Yeah, that'll be dangerous. Elemental Bond will trigger for the first time on that side. They get to draw a card. Oracle of Moldaya. Managed to pull one of those out of the... Was it the set boosters? I think so. Land into play. Landfall triggers. We also have an Eternal Witness on the top of the deck. Some full sleeve art. Beastie into play will trigger Elemental Bond. Hellkite Corsair. I actually really like this card. The red dragons in these past few sets have been ridiculously good. Good thing they can't play it, though. Wood Foothills getting the crack. Ooh, Decimate on top. Ooh, that's bad. That's super bad. Do they have the mana to cast it? I don't think they will. I think they'll be one short. 
Kamal original now on top of their deck. Nice. So yeah, this is the original Kamal. Well, the original green one. The original one was red. So just before anybody says anything, I'm aware. So this is the original one, and you can see where the new one gets all of its abilities. Oop, does look like, oh, Renna Excavator, okay. So more landfall triggers are going to be happening. As much as I love landfall, the decks do take a long time, and I don't always pull out my Omneth deck every time I go somewhere. More triggers, Crozen Grip. Yeah, that'll be good against our Noxious Gear Hulk. Woodfoot Hill's getting the crack again. Itali Primal Storm, one of my favorite red cards, but I mean, I don't know who doesn't like Atali, as long as you're using it anyway. Cryptolithrite, everything becomes a mana dork. They do have enough mana to also cast Decimate, which, it hurts. They can't target the Erebos. Just because it has Indestructible doesn't mean they can't target it. Yeah, we got stuff, and most of it's ours. Uh, Gitrog and Testing has been like a magnet for people's hatred. Alright, we'll put Yorok back in the command zone. Oh, sorry, what did I say? Gitrog? <laughs> my bad. I meant Yorok and Testing. No attacks out of Tana and Kamal. That works for me. They'll probably just cast Kamal next turn and then murder us. So that's bad. Hopefully we get a board wipe, but I'm not counting on it. Might have to do Magus. Might have to dig with Erebos. And then we won't really have mana for a board wipe, which is somewhat concerning. Over to the Demir player. Gitrog monster triggers. Will they sack a land? They did. They sacked a swamp. We got a Boggin to play from the Demir player. They're sending it at us. Nah. All right. Fair is fair. At least there were no better targets. Whelming Wave, there's some mass removal. Returnal creatures their own hand accepts Kraken, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. At this point, I can live with that. And everything is washed away. Demir player taps down the rest of their mana and passes it off. Cool, so I think next turn we play Karavek the Merciless and watch people dance around it for a little bit. I mean, honestly, the Demir player and the Damia player aren't going to be dancing. Tana and Kamal, though, might do a little bit. Tatia of a Benthic Druid coming back down for the Dami player during their turn. Life gain is going to be annoying, so I hope Erebos sticks on the battlefield for a good long time. Land into play for the Damia player. They gain a life. Well, not really, since Erebos is out. And draw a card. Comes to our turn, we get Throne of the High City. A remnant from a previous design, but I kind of like the card. Let's go ahead, put a Mountain into play. And then let's summon the Karavek. You know, the good one. Kervek the Merciless. Into play and pass the turn. Eternal Witness. Uh, they'll probably get back Decimate. So that's a sad face. Let's hit him for three. Ewit into play. It triggers. Decimate. Blow up our guy. Yeah. Probably blow up Kervek. Target Erebos. Felwar Stone. Tatiova. Or not Tatiova. Sorry. A land of some persuasion. Decimate's great when it works. It's just too often it doesn't. Yep. There it is. Let's go ahead and blast their Eternal Witness and keep them vulnerable. They're also destroying a Gear Reach Sanitarium. That's a sad face. We have Mystical Tutor as a response out of the Damia player. I wish they had done that sooner, but they couldn't. Priority and all that. So we'll go ahead and ping the T and K player. Too bad because we could have just burned the Elemental, or the uh, Eternal Witness rather, for one damage and not wasted the four. Damia does have to reveal what they're searching for, so let's see what they reveal. They reveal Casualties of War. All oh, the mass removal. That was actually in the deck for a long time, and I took it out, opting more for instead for general removal. And there's Decimate, unfortunately blowing up two of our stuff again. Tana and Kamal tap down the mana, pass it off to our opponent. Clean up step, they had to discard, let's see. Zendikar's Royal, Nissa Vital Force, and the Kamal, and Grand Warlord Arata. Sure. Over to the Demir player. They have yet to summon their commanders or Garuda. Garuda has no targets. Shakashima would be kind of useless. They could, if they really need to, summon Tormod. Sad Robot, that's pretty good too. They'll go get a land. Island into play tapped. They tap down the rest of their mana. Off to Damia. Damia hasn't done too much this game. They're going to have 7 cards in hand after the draw. 32 life. So I am worried about them. Tana and Kamal were obviously the threat in the very beginning. But we're running out of gas without this Magus going off, so it's going to be a little bit difficult. Damia had a landfall trigger. They got to draw a card. Casualties of War. Hey, none of it's targeting our stuff. That's nice. Uh, It's listing all five, but it's only targeting two. Usually the card will transform and say what it's doing, so that's a little bit awkward. Tatiava on the attack. Off into us. That's fair. We're stopping them from gaining life. Alright, we take three down to 41. Damia passes the turn. We get Plague Boiler, but uh, I think Mages of the Wheel in three visits this turn. Throne of the High City into play. And let's go ahead and play the Mages. 
and then let's play three visits. We get a basic forest out of our deck to the battlefield tapped. Or not tapped, sorry. I'm used to rampant growth. And we'll pass the turn there. We have a decent blocker. We have an ability to draw a card if we really need to. And next turn we could wheel a bunch of people. Uh, noticeably, we'll get to wheel ourselves into new cards and see what we get. Hopefully get Yearlock back down at some point, but I only have one infinite combo in the deck, so the Yearlock's not necessary for us to win, so we'll have to see what happens. Lotus Cobra coming back down for the T and K player. Excavator also coming back down. Landfall. Evolving Wilds gets the crack. Snow-covered forest into play. They do have a few snow-covered lands, so I don't know what that's for necessarily, although in my Tamir Omnath deck, I use it to help fuel Field of the Dead. Oracle of Moldai coming back down. Let's see what's on top of their deck. It's Rhythm of the Wild, a card I was actually just considering adding in here because haste would be good for with your lock, but in designing the deck, I ran out of room really fast. Willis Cobra triggers again. Evolving Wilds cracked just after coming back into play. Short life. Hey, Forest on top. Willis Cobra triggers again. Clipterlith right. All their guys are mana dorks. That's it for Tana and Kamal. Over to the clone deck extraordinaire. Also, I guess it makes zombies. Land into play. Morphic Pool. Tent with Reflections. Choose target creature you control, create a token that's a copy of it. Each opponent may create a Taki, or sorry, a Taki, a token that's a copy of that creature. For each opponent who does, create a copy. Uh, no, I'm good. Uh, we're pretty good on lands. Going to do mages stuff. I think we're fine. Okay, so the only person to take them up on the offer besides themselves, obviously, is Tana and Kamal. It seems pretty good. They'll need the defenses. Uh, luckily, Damia and we did not. So they will get two extra lands though, and I imagine there's a lot of big creatures in that deck. Oh, uh, hopefully not any Eldrazi, but there probably is. Close Cobra Trigger out of the T and K player. Heroic Intervention on their top of their library. That's uh, well, good to know at the very least. It does get around our Plague Boiler though, so that's going to be difficult. Island into play for the Demir player. And then a Swamp. Over to Damia. So they could summon their commander. Six cards in hand, seven after the draw now. Their hand's been full most of the game, more or less. And they haven't done too much, so I'm really concerned that the, uh, as we waste our resources on each other, Damia's gonna come from behind with the stone glare and just kind of turn us all into, you know, grotesque statues of some kind. Hey, the Gitrog monster coming back down for that player. I used to love that card. And then people broke it in half. Land into play, Tatiova draws them a card. Gitrog Monster is one of those things I tried to build, and then people found out how to make it really good and infinite and stuff. And then if I ever used it, people would murder me, even though I was playing not, you know, a subpar version. That's happened to me with a lot of commanders. Let me know in the comments if that's happened to you. I got stories for, like, like every fourth deck I've ever made. That's it for Damia. Going to roll over to our turn. Let's see if we get probably a land. Yep, <laughs> Scarred the Rage Pits. Kind of an also a leftover from the previous deck designs. Can't give our guys trample, but it was supposed to give other people's stuff trample. Let's go ahead and play it, though. And I was going to attack into somebody, but now they can just kill the Magus, which is no good. So let's just go ahead and wheel. See what we get so we can play it in the main phase. Looking at our new hand, Ingarik's Wake. Thought we'd get some kind of removal. Lands, way to get land, and Rankle, Master of Pranks. Okay, we are short on doing the Ingarik's Wake, so that is problematic. But we can get down Wrinkle and Clothis. Kind of call that a turn. It's something at least. Clothis and Erebus are actually uh, some of the first cards I thought of when designing this deck. The God of Death, the God of Destiny. Why not? Now it looks like we have a response to Agruta. A counter spell. That's a sad face. Yeah, it's because it can mess with their graveyard. So a good response, but I've never gotten to play this card ever yet. And I own one in paper, I own one online. It's a sad day. Damn it. All right, let's go ahead and do Rankle. All right, so who, do we want to attack anywhere? I mean, not really. We kind of just need to survive into Ingarak's Wake. So I think we're not going to attack anywhere, unfortunately, because I haven't gotten to swing with this card yet either. A lot of new cards in here for me. And we'll just pass it off. Oh, we have Putrefy going after the Excavator in response at end of turn from the Damia player. Nice. We got Amniscience out of Damia's hand. Dear God, not omniscience. I didn't know. No omniscience. I don't like it. Well, that's a lot of cards on top. We get to see it all. Artifact Mutation, there was Mina and Den, and then I think, was it some kind of veil? I didn't catch the land. Dragon Broadmother. 
That's a card I wanted for a long time and finally came down price and I forgot to buy one. Sad face. It's turning out to be a really sad video. Land into play. Cobra triggers. Another land into play. Let's see. They have a lot of mana too. They have... Oh, well, they activated it. What is this card? Okay, this is actually Gaia's Cradle because, you know, need another one. Because the other one was destroyed. Kamal, Heart of Crows are coming down and all of their guys are mana dorks. Fabled Passage gets the crack. Pulphoros, God of the Forge on top. That is super dangerous. We'll probably survive to do in Garak's Wake. I just don't know in what capacity. Tana of the Blood Sword coming down for that player. Both of the commanders in one turn. That's pretty good. Two of the combats. Kamal will rally the troops. Er, creatures? I don't know. He's a druid. The spirits? Elementals? Tree folk? They're getting buffed. Well, thankfully not Rhythm of the Wild buff, though, with the haste. Oh, no attacks out of them either. Thank the gods. All right, Chaos Lords have favored us. Off to the Demir player. Dig through time. Bunch of stuff gets exiled. Not Garuda, though, but that's fine. Uh, Avenger Shaper Savant was in there, one of my favorite blue cards, too. I haven't found much use for him, though, but he is a wizard. Saw that in Kazaa. Unfortunately, Dig Through Time does say look at the top cards, not reveal them. So, eh. They do get to pick and choose, though, which is really good. To the Demir player's actual turn. So, Dragon Broadmother will trigger, creates a baby dragon. So, I want to play in Garrick's Wake next turn. But I just remembered that the Tana and Kamal player has Heroic Intervention and plenty of mana to use it with. So, that is a sadness. I mean, unless we draw Ugin, he is in the deck. I was concerned to using all his dust, but I think Ugin would be better overall, although a bit more expensive. Biden of Thassa coming down for the Demir player. We have sand robots all into us. That's unfortunate. We'll just take it. Biden of Thassa will trigger, getting them some card draw. We'll go down to 35. Arcane Signet coming down for the Demir player. And damnation. Destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. Well, that opens us up to Ngurik's Wake because the uh, Tana and Kamal player is probably going to cast Heroic Intervention to save their board. There it is. Heroic Intervention. That's too bad. Didn't get to use Rankled Master of Pranks much either. This is, indeed, the saddest day for cards I haven't gotten to use yet. Bunch of sad robot triggers. Demir player will get to draw three cards. Dami a Sage of Stone player's turn. Dragon into play for the Kamal and Tana player. Arcane Signet coming down for the Damia player. Starting to feel a little bit left out there. Eternal Witness. So what are they getting back? I really hope it's not Omniscience. That would kind of suck. Because then they can just cast everything and refill their hand with Damia. Ooh, that would not be good. No, it's not. It's Song of the Dryads. Song of the Dryads and Chance of Permanent. It's going to go on to Kamal. So it will survive our board wipe. I can live with that. Kamal has become a true druid. One with the forest. And Sylvan Library coming down for the Damia player. Comes to our turn and our upkeep. Dragon token into play for our opponent, Tana and Kamal. We get Dragon Skull Summit. Lots of lands. There's only 37 in the deck, so that's a bit awkward. Let's play Ghost Quarter and blow up the Gaia's Cradle. I really don't want that around. To the bin it goes. They get to search the library for a basic land card. A couple of landfall triggers for them. Savala, Heart of the Wilds. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Behind Tana and Kamal is a lot of power. All right. Um. Yeah, I guess we just still blow up the board. That seems like the plan. And hopefully nobody counters it. If we have a response out of Tana and Kamal, their sad robot token will die. They'll get to draw a guard. We have Chaos Warp on the Song of the Dryads. It'll get shuffled back into Damia's deck. They reveal three visits off the top. And Kamal is back into play. Sad face. Over to Tan Kamal. We're going to need to draw some cards. No matter how much life it takes, I think. Because we are getting, like, nothing but land and land searches at the moment. By Thassa being activated by the Demir player, creatures able to attack must this turn. That's an ability a lot of people tend to forget about or don't use. I had in my Spirit Supreme Judge deck. That was kind of hilarious. So Kamal does have to attack this turn. I don't know where they're attacking. Probably into us. Temple of Abandoned into play. They get to scry one. Two combat. Kamal gets a little bit swaller. Is that a word? 
Come on, the attack straight into us. To no one's surprise, that was the fastest tapping I've ever seen MTGO do. We are down to 27, eight commander damage. Oof. Rich cards expertise. That's pretty good. They'll draw eight cards and cast something for five or less from their hand without paying the mana cost. Tana and Kamal being very resilient. Ogre Battle Driver stuff gets haste in 2 0 till end of turn. Nice. And it's of all Heart of the Wilds. Ogre Battle Driver, it will trigger. So Saval will have haste. So it's equal to power, if I remember correctly. Yep, so they get a bunch more mana. Lots of ramp in this deck. But yeah, like I said, uh, Tana and Kamal, rather, very resilient deck so far. But being able to cast a bunch of stuff repeatedly and having billions of mana, you know, green, we'll do that for you. Okay, so they do have Pophros in hand by now. That's pretty dangerous. Valkyrie Awakening. Okay, so they're going to exchange some cards. This is also a great card. I do like that one a lot. Doubling Season. Okay, well now I hope people leave me alone a bit. And three visits. The old version. Over to the Demir player. Lots of mana. Biden able to draw them some cards when they hit people. They also still haven't summoned either of their commanders this game, so no commander tax on them. Uh, Garuda is still in the graveyard to recur. Tormod, the Desecrator, coming down for the first time this game. As mentioned before, or alluded to, I suppose. Saval so the Wilds will trigger is not the biggest creature. Also stop saying that until it's removed or destroyed. Over to Damia's turn. Hopefully they'll have something to deal with all this stuff. We do have mass removal for enchantments and artifacts. Bane of Progress being the uh, specific example. Uh, just not getting it. And frankly, the board wipes haven't been working very well. Kamal and Tana just keep coming back. Dom, uh, Damia and the uh, Demir player just haven't really committed much to the board. Hands are still almost full. And uh, yeah, it's not looking good in the long run. Hey, another three visits. I think that's been three, three visits because there's one in our graveyard. Tana and Kamal did one and then Damia did one. So the flavor, it's, it's, it's at maximum. Hey, it's Steve. Farseek as well. Okay, that is a lot of ramp coming out of Damia right now. Are they going to cast their commander? Consecrated Sphinx. Uh, no, but that's pretty good. Steve in the second main, hitting the bin to go get yet another land for the Damia player. Comes our turn, we get Sanchez, Sleeper Agent. Nice. Uh, Consecrated Sphinx will trigger. I will stop saying that till it's destroyed or removed. Command Tower into play for the turn. We could summon our Commander Yurlock. But unfortunately, it does have haste. We could have it up as a blocker. I was really kind of hoping like Sepulchral Primordial or Molten Primordial would show up. That's too bad though. We did get Zancha though, so what can we do with that? And I think we get down our commander. Uh, I don't think anything else is really going to serve us too much at the moment. Let's go ahead and do that. And we still have Erebus for some card draw. We could play Zancha. Uh, that could be good, but it could also get some ire on us. So I think what we're going to do is just play the Sylvan Scrying and go get a land. What land do we want? Uh, Command Beacon is probably good right now. All right, let's go ahead and pass the turn. Not too much else to do. Over to Tana and Kamal. Let's see what they do. They're gonna have a lot of mana, uh, eight cards in hand, and that is gonna be a lot of pain. Biden of Thassa being activated again, their creatures will have to attack. Consecrated Sphinx will trigger for each draw in Sylvan Library. That's an interesting thing. Uh, Tommy is going to be to full hand straight away. Quartzwood Crasher. Trample. When one or more creatures you control trample deal combat damage to a player, create an XX green dinosaur. Beats a creature token trample. Or actually the amount of damage those creatures dealt to that player. That's pretty good. I remember getting that in Ikoria. Ogre Battle Driver and Savala will trigger. Uh, yeah, I think they get to draw a card off that too. Even with the uh, Ogre Battle Driver's ability, it was still a 6-6 base. Tom of the Blood Sower coming down for that player. Second time this game. Triggers again. Birds of Paradise. Haven't seen that art before. Some more triggers. Birds of Paradise will be a 2-1 able to attack this turn. That's not something you see very often. Hellkite Charger. Uh-oh. That's not good. Can they do infinite attacks? I don't think they can, because they need that double red. And Savala only does, is it green? No, it's X amount of any color. Infinite attacks. Dang it. And Tana and Kamal quit the game? Hold on, to the chat. Oh, they didn't quit the game. They forgot to spend some mana and Yurlock burned them. 
Okay, so that was, uh, yeah, there you go. Tripped on a rift, I guess. Over to the Demir player. Man, <laughs> man, did we luck out on that. They had also just said they had just hit a Morog, too. Jeez, good deck, though, man. Good deck. Yep, said good game to him and everything. I mean, they had it, had they not forgotten about Yerlock. Fell Warstone also coming down for the Demir player. Evil Twin. One of my favorite cards. I do love clones. I just can't bring myself to build Garuda. It's so disgustingly good sometimes. I just, like, it hurts. The clone is Consecrated Sphinx, by the way. Shakashima of a Thousand Faces. All right, let's see what they're gonna clone. Is it gonna be Sphinx? It is a Sphinx. So let's review this. Does it say, yeah, you may draw two cards. Too bad. Might be able to mill that somebody out with Zancha or something. That May ability just makes it so good. Okay, so since they both have a Consecrated Sphinx, I've run into this before, they can go back and forth, and if they wanted to, draw out their whole deck. So that is something we have to kind of be wary of, is possibly a Laboratory Maniac, or a Jace Wielder of Mysteries coming out. Could be somewhat dangerous, although it is a May trigger, so they kind of have to forget, and yet kind of just have to go along with it. I should also note something while this is going on. The uh, Shakashima and the Evil Twin both have blue-black destroy target creature with the same name as this creature. So, yeah, there's that too. Alright, that's all over with. Two Damia's main phase. Also, I want some card draw. We do have it in Xantia and in Erebos. Xantia might come out of the deck because I had tried to build this as a political deck, and it didn't quite work out. People just kind of killed me anyway. Demonic Tutor out for the Damia player. Villainous Wealth targeting the Demir player for 9. That's gonna be a lot of stuff, and we don't have anything to get rid of it. Clone, Duplicant, Torrential Gearhulk, Charcoal Diamond, Dance of the Many, Animate Dead, Mana Drain, and Final Revelation. That's a lot of good stuff. Revelation, unfortunately, can only be cast for X equals zero, but uh, the rest is pretty good. Okay, they decide to cast everything they get. I didn't see them doing Mana Drain or Finale Revelation, so that's weird. I guess they just want to get rid of it. So I imagine Mana Drain, yeah, is targeting the finale. So they will get two free mana. Is that how it works? Yep, CMC two. So there it goes, two free mana to them, at least during their next turn. Turn to Gerhawk will come into play. Let's see what they get back. Uh, Mystical Tutor, maybe? They're getting back Putrefy. All right, there's Putrefy. Where's it going? Consecrated Sphinx, who is Shakashima of a Thousand Faces. Oh, okay. The Demir player quits the game. Uh, that's unfortunate. That means the uh, Damia player also loses all that stuff. Damia player not too happy about the lack of resolution. I can sympathize with that. All right, yeah, straight to the attacks. We're taking four to the face. No blocks, unable to do so. Mana Drain will give them some mana during their second main phase. Two colorless to their mana pool. They do have Arcane Signa available to cast something. Azusa lost but seeking. More lands that can be put into play. All right, so they do have 11 cards in hand. Let's see if they have the lands. Ooh, they do not. Straight to clean up. So they will have to discard four. Let's try to see what they do. Comes to our turn, but let's check it out first. Land, 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 and Necropotence. We get Rupee on Crag. The lands are not fine over here, though. Come on, deck. Give me something else. Let's do Command Tower and get down Xantia. Might as well draw some cards. Let's just double check here. Uh, can't attack us. So that's fine. The uh, Sphinx will be enough trouble. So let's go ahead and do that. Xantia, Sleeper Agent into play. So it costs three, and they lose two life, so that's fine. But then they also draw cards with the Consecrated Sphinx, but there's not much we can do about that just yet. Go ahead and draw a card. It's another land, okay. Let's go ahead and activate our commander. Draw another card. Hey, it's not a land. It is Archfiend of Despair. Have to wait on that for a turn, I think. So this could be pretty good with our commander, or if we can just, you know, hit them is great. Uh, no mana this turn to do it though, so let's just go ahead and pass the turn. They take three from mana burn before their turn goes over. So let's see, they'll have 14 cards in hand after the draw. Sylvan Library will trigger again. Uh, huh, lots of cards they can choose from. Options against us are never good, and we are stuck with four lands and Archfiend of Despair, which could be good, but we'd have to hit them for what, 10 or something? 11? And then hope they didn't play anything this turn? I don't think that's realistic. We do have Xantra though. So that is something. Three lands in the boy. Soul Ring coming down. The Great Henge. I love that card. But it's also kind of like the uh, poster child of everything green does really, really well. 
Nyx Bloom Ancient, because the mana you have is never enough. The Great Hand will trigger for the first time. Krufix God of Horizons. Ah, your lock's going to be kind of worthless. Sad face. Knowledge Exploitation. So, five blue blue, Prowl. Search target player's library, or it's a sorcery card. Dang it. All right, nothing we can do about that. I suppose we could draw a card and hope it's something we need, like an exiling effect, that could be nice. Death Sprout, targeting Xantia. All right, that's unfortunate. Let's go ahead and get one more card out of her, I suppose, then. We get Wound Reflection. Nice. Poor Xantia, you served us well. They also get a land for their trouble. Uh, Death Sprout is a card I like to just call Rampant Murder. Leyline of Anticipation. Oh, please don't drop a Seedborn Muse or any of that garbage. Oh, please don't. Should I have taken a bet? Maybe. We have an attack. Azusa and the Consecrated Sphinx off into our face. Seedborn Muse is going to be very, very hard to deal with uh, because they have nine cards in hand. They'll have to go down to seven. But that's still a lot of answers they could have, and we don't have anything to kill anything. So, it's not looking good. They tap down the rest of their mana to turn it into Carlos. Crew fix will keep it for them. And they pass the turn. We get Blood Gift Demon. Let's go ahead and play a Dragon Skull Summit. And anything we play can be countered, which is the problem, but we don't get anywhere if we don't. So, I'm thinking here Blood Gift Demon and Wound Reflection or Archfiend of Despair and Wooden Reflection using Yurlock. Then we can get them down really low, have Erebus up for defense, and... I mean, they're gonna have responses, but that's the game plan. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So let's go for it. Wound Reflection. Unfortunately, they will keep the mana with Crufix, so... Not much we can do. Swan Song. There it is, we get a bird. Okay, and then I guess we just do Blood Gift Demon instead. Still want that Archfiend of Despair in hand. Blood Gift Demon to the... F well, the stack, anyway. Let's see if it gets countered. It does not. That's nice. Let's pass it off. End of turn. Are we looking at a Psych Rift? No, nope, Rive Replication. That's so much worse. Hey, I actually pulled this off on somebody before. So this is, uh, how you say, Exponential Cumulative or something like that. So everything will now tap for a 3 times 3 mana, times 3 mana, times 3 mana. So, uh, yeah. If only we could kill Crew Fix. That would be so good. So this is a lot of our end step. Uh, if you look at the mana though, they have, uh, what? Easily over 12,000, 1400 mana? Or 12,000, yeah, 12,000. 14,000 mana. Oh my God. Just imagine the glory had cr if we could destroy Crew Fix. Can you imagine the glory? Our land, Scarg the Rage Pits, goes bye-bye thanks to Acidic Slime. That actually ended over to Damia's turn. They have a casual 16,000 plus mana in their mana pool. Uh, if you'll notice the mana on the left side of the screen, that has become even more obtuse. They're turning Volrock into a forest. Well, I guess we'll just try and draw a card then. Draw a card with Erebos? Sure. We get Journey to Eternity. Not helpful. Oh, they have bribery on top. That's just rude. Two combats. All of it attacking. Uh, yeah, I think we're dead. Uh, good game to our opponent, more or less. Uh, I might be a little bit just flabbergasted here. Negative 36. And, uh, I'm gonna do some math on that mana. So if you look at my calculator, because my head hurts, 37,167 mana for our opponent. My brain. So I'm going to give the points to the Tana and Kamal player, because they really had the game had they not forgotten about your lock. Oh, well, nice. They got the most points, too. All right. Well, again, good game to our opponents, uh, generally speaking. Let's go ahead and take a look at the deck. And I definitely know something I want to add now. Okay, here's the deck, and it basically did what it wants to do. Keep our opponents, at least try to keep them down, which didn't work too well, actually. Uh, we got a lot of removal in the deck. Got some ramp. Didn't see too much of that, but we got a lot of lands, too. Only 37, though, in the deck, so I don't know what that's about. We also didn't hit too many of card draw sources. Three, I think? Two? So what I think this deck really needs right now 
is probably a way to exile things. Uh, Deadly, was it Deadly Rollick? Is that the card? Probably put that in there, maybe sever the bloodline to deal with tokens, because that's an issue too. And I do have to take out some of the political stuff I had from back when I tried to make it politics and everybody killed me anyway. So I had to make it more of the Punisher deck, but I still wanted to try and like make deals with people. So over time, this may just become a straight up kind of like Punisher deck, but we'll have to see how it goes. So that's the idea of the deck. That's where I wanted to go with it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I, we need to add, because I mean, had we killed that crew fix, that would have been probably the most beautiful victory ever. But we didn't. Couldn't do it. And now I'm a little bit sad. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this game. If you saw any cards you want for yourself in paper, sealed product, or sleeves to protect said products, please consider using the TCG Player Affiliate link in the description below. It helps out the channel doesn't cost you anything extra. And until we get back to your lock for the next video in this series, with a bunch of eggs hauling removal, probably, hopefully, I'll see you then.